Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Coaching and Consulting Insight series on the Success Insight podcast. Coaching and Consulting Insights introduces you to coaches and consultants that work with professionals, managers, leaders, and organizations to perform at their full potential. Our guest today is Linda Edmiston. Linda is a systems and process improvement specialist. She helps new entrepreneurs set up their business structure and systems to correctly protect themselves legally and financially. And she also helps them implement systems to make connecting with potential clients and onboarding new clients easy, professional, and seamless. Linda, welcome to the Coaching and Consulting Insight Series on the Success Insight Podcast. Thank you, Howard. I'm so excited to be here. Very good. And for our listeners, as usual, in the full spirit of disclosure, I know Linda. We are both members of the San Diego Professional Coaches Alliance. Linda is also a board member. I believe she is the treasurer. We'll talk more about that in a bit. But I just wanted to let you know that Linda and I know each other, and she really has a fascinating story. So, Linda, you know, again, thank you so much. Uh, you are in uh, beautiful Southern California, uh, a couple of hours away. And tell us a little bit about, you know, your background and your work, just to give our listeners a flavor for, you know, the type of work you are doing. Thank you for that. Yes, I'm in Southern California. It's beautiful out today. I'm so excited to be here. And my journey has kind of been lifelong. I've, when I was a kid, the earliest memories I ever had of money was actually having to save the dollar that my grandmother gave me for Christmas. I had to take it to the bank, put it in the bank book and do the math. And as a kid, I thought that was the most horrible thing ever. But when I went to college, I had $2,000 in this bank account. That kind of started my journey of saving and investing because I didn't miss that dollar. And we, even today, how, you know, when we think about saving money in these little tiny bits, oh, people will tell you just don't have the latte, the latte effect, but it's true. And a lot of people don't have that experience of just playing with money from the time they were as far back as they can remember. So money, finance, legal, all of those business back office things stress people out. But for me, it kind of lights me up. I'm a geek that way. So I find it fascinating. And I love sharing that excitement. And you may not love it when you get done working with me, but at least you won't hate it. And I think that is for a lot of people a huge key in making their business more successful. That's very interesting. And, and I could recall, I mean, you brought up the word bank book. I haven't seen or thought about a bank book in so long. And I, I, I think the concept of money for some of us, it's it, we're afraid of it. We're, and some of us don't care. We're just spend, spend, spend. The idea of saving and even to put 10% away, a third away when you get paid to pay the tax man to do the investment. We don't, some of us don't think about that. And especially when you're running a business, you have to remember all of this. And I think you're, you're, you're we should, you know, give a huge shout out again to your grandma. I mean, that was, that was pretty darn good. It was. And to have that opportunity and to realize that most people don't. I cannot tell you how many people I've met, whether it was in my corporate career, because I've spent 20 plus years in sales and marketing and finance, working in major corporations, working in, you know, being in charge of a billion dollar budget systems or a temp job, finding literally a million dollars in their accounting system by accident that I was like, this doesn't even add up right. They were shocked. Well, that's just how my brain works. So I've always had that bent towards money, but no one's taught about it. I mean, this society is really sad how much we're not taught about money. We make it scary. And for women, it's even worse. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I have found some statistics that shocked me that 
a married woman could not have her own bank account without her husband signing on it until 1974. That does not surprise me. I, I know recently there's there's some statistics out in the internet, and that mm -hmm. could very well have been one of those. And it's it's mind boggling. It What's even boggling. worse from a business owner's perspective is a businesswoman could not get a business loan without a man co-signing until 1988. That's when I graduated from high school. Like that seems that's not that long ago. And so I think for women entrepreneurs, especially the system has been rigged against us because we weren't, we didn't even have the opportunities that men have. And so now it's our job to step into what we don't know, instead of using our, I don't know, I'm uncertain. And so I just won't do it, but that actually is hurting us. And as whether you're a man or a woman business owner, making money is important. And that's where all the sales and marketing comes in. But what's most important is how much money you're keeping. Very much. And question comes to mind, Linda, those barriers that were there, you know, how to get a loan, have a bank account, get a mortgage. Somewhere recently, there was a story that it had to do why they sh why this woman needed to get her marriage license because the you know, the husband's name was on the marriage license and so she needed that i forget it's going to come to me probably right <laughs> after this calls over but the question that that is kind of bubbling up for me i'm assuming these barriers in some way still exist and we're still through folks like yourself your work are helping to dismantle those barriers. Absolutely. And a lot of it though, is we have the reality and then you also have a lot of mindset. So in, if you're in you, your mind, you've decided that it's hard, that you're not capable of doing it. And to be honest, when we take a lot of classes, especially in, when you think of the, the basis of my business, as I look at, I call it, you want to lift your business. So lift stands for legal, insurance, financial, and taxes, right? That's the lift to your business. Those industries have been masculine dominated forever because women literally couldn't even access this until, what are we talking about, in the 1980s? So it's just a fact. And I'm not one to sit there and waste time going, I wish it had been different in the past and it should have been different. It just, that's a waste of your time and energy. You deal with what it is right now. We do have more access, but the education is still coming down in a way that a lot of times isn't explained in a way that women can understand it. I've had people just dismiss you. I have a lot of education. My background's in finance. That's what my degree is in. But even with that, I've been in companies where I've been talked down to. Oh, well, you wouldn't understand. And when we hear that enough, we go, oh, yeah, that's right. I guess I wouldn't understand. And it's, but it's our responsibility now to step up and say, it may be hard. I may have no idea what to do, but let me search out the information that I need. I mean, the information that I work with my clients on, you can learn it. Now it takes a lot of time and a lot of people don't want to spend the time. They just want to really work with somebody to have the information presented in a way that they can understand and they can move forward with it. And that's my goal is to make it not so scary, make it a little fun. I have a, I like, I'm a kind of have a fun personality. I'm kind of bubbly and joyful and because I don't have any issues around money, it's easier for me to talk about it. Who are your ideal clients and how are they going to find you? And I don't mean find via website, but what are they asking for in order to be at least aware that somebody like Linda Eviston exists? Well, that's where education has to come in is that this business structures, the backside of your business has got to be the foundation of your business. 
Now, I don't really care how long you've been in business because I have met people who have been in business for 10 years and don't have some of these business structures. I hear things like, well, I only work with people that I know, so I don't need a contract. Why would I need insurance? Well, you need insurance because what if you want to host an event and somebody falls down? You're liable. Did you know that? Right? Well, as a coach, we have to have uh, general liability insurance, which I think that's a conversation you and I are going to have. But yes, I mean, the, whether we host an event or whether we we have to actually insure the types of services we provide. A lot of exactly. people don't know that. Yeah. And they don't know that and they can get into trouble. I mean, one of the worst cases I've ever seen and one thing that lights me up because I really think it's unnecessary is I met a lady who had been a coach for 10 years and she is incredible. She's an incredible coach, incredible healer. And she had an old client who came back. So she'd worked with this woman before and everything, you know, was fine. It was, they were doing a lot of deep work, but the woman, for whatever reason, decided that she wanted to get her money back. Now, she didn't just, you know, you'd think just call you up and say, I need a refund. No, she actually contacted the coach's bank, cried fraud, and the bank has to lock up the bank account. Oh, wow. Now, one of the issues with her is she didn't have separate bank accounts. You got to have separate bank accounts between your personal and your business. And then she also didn't have a contract with her because she'd already worked with her. So the judge said, you didn't have a contract. You not only have to pay back the money that you already spent, but now there's pain and suffering and all the legal fees. This woman lost her apartment. She had to borrow money for four months before she had any access to any of her own money. And she was like, how did I manage to go 10 years without knowing that I needed all this? So we ended up setting everything up after the fact. Now, it doesn't help her with all of that, but now she's like, okay, I've got peace of mind. I actually know I don't have to deal with this in the future. But it broke my heart for her because I was like, that's so not necessary. We don't need to make our lives risky. I'm very risk averse. I, have my, I love insurance. <laughs> and I want to be, I want your business to be safe because the other thing that people don't know is a lot of times when you don't have a clear separation between your personal and your business that, yeah, you're thinking, well, I'll just lose the, however much money I've made in my business. They will go at, you can get sued for everything you have personally, your spouse, your partner, you may like ruin an entire family because of just not having some systems in place. If a potential client comes to you, what are the steps that you begin to go through with them? I, first of all, I'm assuming you have an agreement that you sign with them because being the the risk adverse person that you are, <laughs> let, let's assume you've got, you have that agreement. What are the steps that you're going to begin to take with this new client to get them set up with their systems so that this lift metaphor is, is essentially accounted for? You know, what are, what are those systems? So actually the first step is we just do a comprehensive business assessment. So I take everybody through that and through that, you really get to see what do you have? Where have you done a great job? Because a lot of times it's not a hundred, we're never a hundred percent bad or good. We have a balance. We have some of the pieces, but just not all of them. So we find out where you're at so that we have that starting point because without knowing where you're at and where the holes are in your business, you can't move forward. I mean, and a lot of these the way I look at it is you're, you're kind of, your business is like Swiss cheese. But you think about it, you've got holes in your business. So sometimes your business can be like regular Swiss cheese with some big holes or it's baby Swiss with just a few little items missing. And based on what we found, you either can take the assessment and go off and research it and figure out what you want to do next. Or if you really want to have the support in doing these different pieces, then we talk further. And so 
this with the assessment is you are beginning to lay out the things that need to be done. And so again, you're looking at legal, the insurance, the financials, the taxes. By the way, I, I, I'm thinking too, you probably have never seen a spreadsheet that you didn't like. I <laughs> That's mean, true. I, I love spreadsheets too. And it's, but you, you, you're, you're, you're on the nitrous oxide for that one. You got a lot of <laughs> room in, in your spreadsheet love, but so you're working with this client. What education are you helping them to become knowledgeable and accountable for? Because I, I imagine there's things they just need to learn this. They can't just rely on you oh, right. to oh, go take care of this. So what kind of education are you advising them or books that you might tell them, go read this, go watch this YouTube, go take this class? What are some of those pieces that your client is going to need to, you know, begin to take ownership of for themselves? Well, it is definitely about education. I'm making you an educated consumer so that you can know who you need to hire when there's pieces, but it starts with, you know, your business structure, what kind of business you have specifically, it's all unique because where you're at in your business and what type of business you have makes all the difference in what kind of structure, which then determines what kind of banking systems you need, what kind of accounting systems, what level of accounting do you need? And then your skills. So some people are really great at maybe having their own software, accounting software to track their income and expenses. And there's different types that suit different people. And then there's other people that are like, you know what, now that I understand why I'm doing this, now I can actually hire the right bookkeeper, the right accountant, or maybe I need a CPA. But without that education, you're going to end up frustrating yourself and the person you're hiring because you're not, you don't speak the language. And so my education is around what's the language that you're going to use with a VA who is going to help you with XYZ part of your business. What do you need to talk to your bookkeeper about? What are they going to expect from you? And by doing it with me, where there's no pressure and they're not paying that person by the hour, going, How am I working with an attorney? Like, if you think about contracts, we'll work it through some contract templates and get you 80%, 90% there. And then based on where you're at, we have you go to then a small business attorney who will do the final review for your state, for your region, for your product, so that it's final, final. But you didn't have to spend the five or six hours with the attorney at $500 an hour to try to get a contract, which is normally what people do, which is one reason why they don't ever have a contract because they go, it's too expensive. It's like, well, one, it's very expensive not to have a contract, but we can do a lot of the heavy lifting. I mean, I work with an attorney. I did this even when I was getting divorced 10 years ago is my ex and I actually worked together to figure out what we wanted to do. And then we gave it to the attorney to just do the final tweaks. They're like, we don't need to pay someone to do the information that we need. I have a fabulous small business attorney that actually does a lot of classes. So on the tax side, we have, I'll suggest that to my clients, like get on his podcast. Let's listen to him. He's a great resource. And so he's one of my resources that I have when we reach that point in the, their business. But this podcast with the, the attorney definitely would like to get you know, uh, for the show notes, the name of the podcast, because we'll definitely, in addition to your social information, we can also share that information with our listeners as well. A question that, that I, again, I do have is, who are your ideal clients? I mean, and what, we know entrepreneurs, I'm an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, you and I know a lot of them through the SDPCA. However, is there a particular recipe for what that, or I know there's a word, there's, there's a, there's a psychological word, uh, archetype. So let's just use that word. Is there an archetype for your ideal client that you want to work with? Because I imagine you're not going to work with everybody. Maybe you are, but is, is what's that look like for you? 
Well, as a coach, you know, we always say that we can work with everybody, but who I really enjoy working with and who we have the best results with are service providers, heart-based people, mostly women, and who have that need to have both mindset around money and the how-to, because I'm really good at combining the practical with a little bit more of the spiritual and the woo-woo, because we're a holistic business. We have to look at where you're at professionally, but it also is impacting you personally. So I love working with those people who are open to seeing the differences that this can make in their life. And there is some tech involved, not a lot. I try to make it as tech friendly as possible, but it's fun to have somebody who is open to learning new software and new systems who is willing to just, cause they're gonna, it's a do it with you system. Like when I do work with people one-on-one, -on -one, it becomes a do it with you because it's not about me just doing it all. I will do a lot of the heavy lifting and then it needs to turn over to you. And then I train you on how to do the adjustments for the future. Like we'll, when we look at even just a getting away from the legal and the financial, when you are going to be on, I had a client who was, had written a book with a group and the group had said, well, you need to have a, a website. You need to have a landing page. And she had signed up for a course to do WordPress to learn how to create a WordPress website, which is great, except it's not fast and she's not techie. And so she had just gotten caught up in the weeds and just hadn't done anything. So she calls me up and she's like, I have two days. I have to have this up and running. So we found a website, we built it out for her super easy. And she was able then to go, okay, now these are the, I understand how to make the tweaks, the changes. And she is so happy with it. And it was, something that she needed to do, but it didn't have to be done the hard way. So I'm all about finding the easiest way, the simplest way, the most direct way to have all of the pieces of your business set up from that kind of that beginning stages. Now, once you are a bigger, big time entrepreneur and you're making, you know, your $500,000 and you have all these clients, you can then afford to pay and have someone build you out a magical website with all the bells and whistles but in most cases, in the very beginning, it's not necessary. And even I have clients that I've helped with, you know, they've got a website that's nice and we, I am able to help them because I'm good with computers and good with tech. So I can figure it out. And so we can enhance it. But am I a WordPress specialist? No, I don't like WordPress. I don't really understand WordPress. <laughs> and that's not what I want to focus on, but I can help so that they end up leaving with a full, well-rounded business that can support them for now, but I'm not their forever person. And I'm happy to give them the recommendations of, you know, I can help them set up a basic LinkedIn. And then I send them to someone like you, Howard, <laughs> to have them really in-depth work on their LinkedIn, right? But in the beginning, they may just go, you know what? I just want to be able to tell somebody I have a LinkedIn account. And that works because it's just more about having this, you know, any more that's like a business card. You just got to have it so that you can appear to be more professional for the world, even though we all know it's all about who you are and not about how great your website is. Oh, definitely that. And somewhere, Linda, the, there, there's this malady that most entrepreneurs suffer. And I know I have suffered from it. And I have, at my grand old age, have learned to kind of brush it off is we are susceptible to the shiny object syndrome. You know, we go to these quote unquote, I'm hosting a three day mastermind and that whole, that whole mastermind, it's, it's this big, it's a joke because at the end of the mastermind, there's a pitch and that pitch is for you to invest in a very high ticket item which still requires you to do all the work. Mm -hmm. And what I love is you're helping entrepreneurs. And as you said, you know, folks that are service providers are heart-based and good mindset 
to invest in the right things at the right time because I'm all about what's what's my best next move. And mm -hmm. I don't have to have this phenomenal website. If it, you know, it, yes, it's important, but maybe not important step one. Maybe the first thing you need to do is just get a LinkedIn profile, get a Facebook or a meta, I guess that's their new name, Facebook page. But knowing what the right thing to do at the right time is very important. And as entrepreneurs, you know, we sometimes, you know, suffer from this malady of shiny object syndrome. And I, I think that's where someone like yourself is really extremely valuable because you're going to help your client figure out what the right system is, right tools are. And as you help them cut across the legal, the insurance, the financial and the taxes. I love that. And because I have been that, I have spent my tens of thousands of dollars on all of the marketing, all the sales in order to get my business up and going. And you know, nothing worked because the truth is it's conversations. And that doesn't actually cost anything. So having your one-on-one -on -one conversations is usually, that is actually how we make our business. But when we look at everybody has a hole in their business, that was my hole for a couple of years. I was like, no, 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 I'm just going to work on this. I'll learn Facebook ads. I'm going to learn how to write a book, speak on stage. And the whole time, my hole in my business, because I had the business structure. I had that before I even thought of having a client. I did not want to talk to anybody. Let's not do networking. I was so nervous trying to attend networking events and I would just stay in the corner and mumble something or just not make no connections. I had to learn how to actually have important conversations and actually be authentic and be in my heart and be able to speak my truth. And now that I'm doing it more, I'm like, oh gosh, it wasn't nearly as, as hard as my mind had made it sound because I had told myself I was super shy growing up and see, I, I don't talk well. If you know me, I can talk a lot, but if you don't, I'm really shy. That is just a mindset. So I had to bust through my own gaps in my business so that everything could change. And that's what I want for other people is to help them fill those gaps because it's not necessary. I had a, I was working with a lady and, and this is the other thing about all these bright, shiny objects is some of them are amazing. And then a lot of them, they're just really good at sales and marketing. And she had been offered the guy was, you know, and I'm financially minded. So I'm asking the hard questions. Well, they're telling me it's worth $12,000, but they're going to give it to me for six. What a deal. And I'm like, okay, well, what exactly are you going to be doing? Like, what's your part? Oh, I have to do this, this, and this. What's the, is there any one-on-one? -on -one? Is there any group coaching? What is it? She came down, but she really wanted to do it. And I was like, well, why don't you negotiate? What would you really think that you should pay for this? And she's like, mm, $2,000. I was like, well, why don't you just offer that? And she's like, oh, I can't do that. He wants me to pay 6,000. She actually negotiated for $2,000 because she just was like, I had explained it to the point. She's like, I cannot, I'm not willing to spend more than this because that's what it's worth for me. And so it was really, it made her very empowered. And that's the thing with a lot of women is we don't feel empowered. We don't negotiate. I mean, even regular corporations, it's, this is why the wage gap is there is because women aren't taught how to negotiate. We're afraid. We're afraid we're going to, I don't know, get in trouble. And, but you just ask. And now it may not have worked out. She, I was just really happy because I was, I could see where, he had sold her so much, but she is so new in her business that it literally was, I'm looking at going, there's no need for her to take this course at all. It's way too soon, but that's not my job to like talk you into, you know, change your mind, but can I at least get you to do it at a lower price? <laughs> yeah, that, that's fantastic. A great story. And I love this idea of rewiring this mindset that I can't do something or I, I have to believe that somebody is going to do something for me at this particular price. And I have to learn to ask questions and not take things at face value. I mean, there, there's a guy 
offering his, I think he's, oh, what is he? I don't know if it's a sales funnel or, you know, a, a speak sheet, speaker sheet, a one page speaker sheet, and he's offering it for free. It's a $497 value or, and it's like, you can go online and just do a Google search and you can get a lot of examples because once you're on the guy's list, you're, you're on his list and, and good luck trying to get off of it. But yeah, I think what I love about what you're sharing is ask questions, don't take things at for granted and really helping your clients change their mindset. So they, they take ownership. Now they may not have the answers they mean, but you're at least coaching them to ask the right questions or ask questions, be curious. And, and I love that. I love that. With your work, I mean, you're busy building your business. I know you are also uh, a coach by training as well. And you're also the treasurer for the San Diego Professional Coaches Alliance. And how did you get involved with the SDBCA? I was introduced by a fellow coach, and it is such an amazing organization. It's one of the few organizations that actually support coaches in their business, not just how to coach, but how to run a business. So we have the most amazing speakers come in. I mean, we had Marshall Reynolds just the other week, and it's such a great place for networking, for learning new skills, and enhancing our business. And so when I had the opportunity to step in as the treasurer, because again, money and numbers are super easy. It was just a no brainer. And I've had such a good run with them and we're changing even and growing the, the organization and we're taking a new direction now. And it's so exciting. And I'm looking forward to what the next year has to offer but I recommend it for, for everyone because we're actually, we're even going to be dropping the name San Diego because it's really the professional coaching Alliance. Yeah. So we are global. I mean, you're a member and you're in Vegas. So we have members in Canada and all over and we're really reaching out around the world now and having these monthly meetings. We have our own round table, you know, once a month where you can bring your problem and people will, the rest of the coaches the other business owners will give you your mastermind feedback. And I know, and you know, most masterminds are like $297 a month. And this is all included in your membership. Plus all of the years of recordings we have of prior speakers. And for this year, get in before we raise the price. It's $175 for a year membership. And I think it's such an amazing help to business owners, no matter what the stage is. And it's a good opportunity for people to get involved. And I mean, I think volunteering in something that you're passionate about is such a good fit. Definitely that. And uh, one of the other benefits for our listeners, if you are a coach, perhaps certified by the International Coach Federation, I'm not aware of the other coaching credentialing bodies. But if you, if we have during our monthly meeting, a speaker that is speaking on a topic that's considered a core competency, you get credit for it. So what a great investment to not only attend a, a great speaker, meet the other members like Linda and myself, but also you can get your core competency credits as well as your general uh, development credits uh, for if you are an ICF uh, member. So that to me was like worth part of the price of admission. So definitely that. And it's, you know, you've been a great resource for the SDPCA and it's been great to, to kind of get to know you there as well. So you are in San Diego when you're not helping entrepreneurs create systems and help them prepare to have a business that doesn't have so much Swiss cheese in it. What do you, what do you like to do? What, what's, what's, what, what kind of gets your blood boiling in a good way, you know, kind of gets you excited? <laughs> well, you know, living a couple of miles from the beach, I have to say walking to the beach is very cliched, but it is uh, my happy place. I'd love to sit and meditate and just watch the water. I'm lucky there's hiking trails nearby in Elfin Forest and it's just beautiful that I can go from the beach to the, the trees but I love live music 
And that is something that, you know, during this whole time with uh, the pandemic of not being able to listen to live music. So I'm waiting. I'm excited about that coming back. But I just enjoy, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful life. I'm very blessed. And I just kind of enjoy like everybody else does, just kind of just going about my day and living in a place that brings me joy. And I never would have thought I could have lived here. I'm originally from Ohio. I was actually just in Ohio visiting my family and it started getting cold. And I was like, yeah, it is time for me to go home. And because to me, cold is like 60, then I need a coat, (laughs) but it is such a great place and I'm very blessed to, to live here. And, and I've lived though, I've lived in Las Vegas and that's, and that's a very fun place to live as well. And I love, I mean, I think travel, that is my other passion between the coaching and travel. I have been to China twice. I have traveled to Australia, New Zealand for six weeks. I have had some amazing opportunities in my life to really see how the world works and to see how blessed we are in this country. And so I don't take it for granted. I am a big proponent of education and stepping up into our power so that we can change the next generation and the world. I love that. And, you know, I I think you may have just answered our question for our feature at the end of our shows, The Insight to Go. I think you did a great job for that one. As I agree, I mean, being able to get out of our comfort zone and travel, see new cultures, learn whether it's the culture itself or the what makes that culture unique It's just and that's all a part of learning and it's that exploration as well so definitely appreciate you sharing that if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work linda where are the best places for them to go right now the best place is you can check out the empower right empower you call.com and right there is where you can sign up for the comprehensive business assessment. Right now it's just $97. It's for an hour and we are going to dive deep into your business and find ways to make more money, find ways to save money and find ways to make your life a lot easier. Very good, very good. Now, uh, any other social sites that you'd like to uh, send our listeners to? I'm also on LinkedIn. Okay, all right, very good, very good. For our listeners, you know, I'm going to ask this question about LinkedIn. So that's good. So yes, she is there. And definitely you got to check her out on the empoweryoucall.com. Take advantage of the business assessment that's going to be available. And we'll also provide backlinks to her LinkedIn profile. Before we head out, Linda, anything else you'd like to leave with our listeners? I mean, you had great insight to go and this wonderful Uh, description of why travel culture has been so important for you, but anything else before we head out, you want to share? Just want to say that you are more supported than you know, and allow yourself to be supported in your business, no matter who you reach out to. We all need each other and we need to know that we're not alone. You don't have to do your business alone. You don't have to struggle you can have the assistance you need so that you can just really take the time to do what you love and your genius zone is working with your clients. So don't hold yourself back to working with even more clients because you're not feeling ready to do it. I love it. Thank you so much, Linda. It's been an, a pleasure uh, to have you on the Coaching and Consulting Insight Series on the Success Insight Podcast. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, visit with us today. Thank you so much, Howard, for having me. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with Linda Ebiston. She's the founder of Empower Your Best Business. Really some wonderful insights that she has shared with you all today about, you know, if you are in the entrepreneur space, if you are a service provider, and and really perhaps, you know, a heart-based service provider, coaches, consultants, working with people through their struggles, and really caring about serving them, not only that, but you have to take care of yourself. And that also involves really keeping your eye on your business and addressing those issues, the legal, 
the insurance, the financial, the taxes, and as Linda said, the lift aspect of your business. And really some great insights from Linda today. And we hope you found them valuable. So do again, go check out our website at empoweryoucall.com. We'll provide the backlink, of course, again, the assessment, as well as we'll provide the backlink to her LinkedIn profile. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Go out there, have a phenomenal day, take care of yourselves, your family, wear your mask if it still makes sense, practice social distancing if it makes sense, as well, take care of the community. You know, it's not just about you, it's important, but also the community around you, because together, all boats rise when the tide comes in. So folks, again, uh, if you enjoyed this episode of the Coaching and Consulting Insight Series, you can visit us on successinsightpodcast.com. We have also our Success Insight Podcast pages on LinkedIn and Facebook, as well as our podcast uh, platforms where you can find our episodes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, and especially Spotify, where we have the Coaching and Consulting Insights playlist. And that's available to you as well. So you can listen to this episode with Linda, as well as our other episodes. Wherever you find us, though, we would love your feedback. You know, like the episodes, give us a comment, follow us, and really some wonderful content that's out there. We are in 2021, we're two months away to the very end. We're going to have well over 100 episodes this year. So in I think total, we're going to be well over the 300 mark. So lots of great content for you. Okay, folks, take care. And we'll see you on another episode of the coaching and consulting insight series on the success insight podcast. Take care now. Success insight is a production of Fox coaching and first story strategies. Find us online successinsightpodcast.com.